Yeah. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Paul and Garrett, for giving me the opportunity to speak here at TAG today. Thank you very much. And I also want to introduce you to my good friend, Chris Bach, who's sitting here in front, uh, who mentoring me during the whole process of the 2D reconstruction. Uh, he's origi originally from the visual effects industry and is going to join us today also for the discussion part. Um, yeah, how you also mentioned, virtual archaeology, understanding the past through a virtual reality question. This is going to be a very condensed, uh, condensed presentation of a very complex subject. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just going to touch very lightly on several points. Uh, to open up for a later discussion. Um, yes, what is the scientific value of a 3D model and how can we use 3D to create a spatial awareness in archaeology? Space, what is this? Uh, <laughs> there are a couple of ph ph philosophical ways to explain it and definition, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to give a definition of space, how I understand it for my presentation or for my what how I understand it from my master thesis. Uh, in this case, it's just a pure clinical position of objects in space. Um, here, I want to give you a quick introduction to my master thesis. The site is called Cornish Diakuri, which I worked uh, for, and uh, is located in the western part of Romania, uh, in the region called Bonat. The fortification is dated in the late Bronze Age, between the 5th and 11th century BC. It's a <laughs> giant enclosure which covers an area of 1,722 hectares, that means 17 square kilometers, which contains four circular elliptical ramparts. And the biggest one is the fourth one. Uh, it's this one here. Um, uh, is six kilometer long and three kilometer wide. This slide shows you three examples of the recent landscape structure in Cornish there. Uh, the pictures were taken in 2014 from me, uh, by me. The wall structure stands out on the modern agricultural areas and the fact that it's not disturbed by modern buildings made it visible in the surrounding landscape. It's very good, preserved. Um, but the preservation at all, uh, of the wall system is also different, like the third and the fourth wall are um, less preserved than the first and second enclosure. Um, the entire area is huge and very impressive, and it's hard to get a grasp on when you stand there. Um, the reason why I wrote my master thesis actually was uh, my curiosity to get a spatial understanding of the wall's construction in the landscape. For this, I use 3D technology to examine the spatial uh, or yeah, spatial environment or character of the settlement on three different scales levels. Um, so the first one, it's the big scale. Is the I use the SATM data to examining the enclosure in the surrounded area. Um, the middle scale was the lidar pictures or lidar scan, which was to examining the enclosure in the immediate surrounding surroundings. <laughs> And uh, the, the little scale was the um, photogrammetry scale, wh where I did 3D surface reconstructions of two different areas to examine the detail of the enclosure. Here, in this presentation, I'm just going mainly to talk about the photogrammetry level, where we took around 800 photographs of two different areas with a drone. On the slide, you can see a couple of photos exa as examples from area one uh, on the left side and area two on the right side. And the map shows you the location of the two areas uh, on the second wall. <coughs> Based on the photos, I created a 3D surface reconstruct reconstruction of the two areas. This is um, an example for the gate area, so area one. And by using the surface models, I did a 3D reconstruction of the original wall system, which you see in the bottom picture. Um, this is the final reconstruction of the rampart with the ditch in front. Yes, the aim of the 3D reconstruction. Um, it was basically to give a sense of scale on two levels. The first one was uh, 
to give a sense of the construction in the landscape or to to have the sense. Um, and the second one was to uh, create an impression of the construction by an observer in the landscape. Um, I could have built the wall system with simple geometry like boxes, uh, but I found it important to have details like posts, which you see in figure 14, uh, posts and beams. Um, everything was built to scale based on the excavation report by St. McCloskey et al. from 2011. <coughs> was the activation report. Um, I found this important in order to give a more detailed impression of the scale ratio to a person placed in the landscape. <coughs> um, the pictures on the left side are from area one, and the pictures on the right side are from area two, and there you can see the reconstruction, the wall reconstruction in it. Even though it's just still pictures, here you still get a sense of space, actually. Now we're coming to the problems and solution during my whole process. Um, I'm going to speak about four points here. The first one concerning the learning curve, then the scientific accuracy, and then, yes, how to fill the gaps of missing data, and how to visualize the final product. So um, for the first point, um, concerning the first point, yes, when you work with 3D data, you have a steep learning curve. <laughs> it's an initial problem, actually. Um, I worked with tree data before and has the best knowledge of it, but as a beginner, it's hard to get a quick result, actually, um, of, of, of this 2D reconstruction. Yes, the key solution here would be like to make a research and gathering of information. It's very important. And to connect interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary with people from uh, instance from the 3D visual effects industry like spatialists, uh, etc. Um, and it's also important to testing or get a practical experience, for instance, in photogrammetry, um, to find out what works and what doesn't work. The scientific accuracy point uh, concerning the depends on so many things and factors that need to be perfect. Uh, so um, Concerning the photogrammetry work here, uh, it's first the physical factors, <coughs> which include the weather, the camera equipment, the lens aberration, etc. Technical factors are also very important, the algorithms, algorithms of the software which you use. So if you use PhotoScan or Visual SFN, it's completely different. <coughs> and also the limits of your hardware at, and equipment. There are also the human factors, fa factors which plays a role. Um, so that uh, concerned the uh, research, the camera settings, like exposure time, ISO, etc., and also the picture quality, the size, the angle, and the size and shape, uh, and uh, contrast of res reference markers are actually very important. <laughs> How to fill the gaps of missing data. Um, the excavation up until now in Konecht Yakuri don't provide a full picture of the construction so I needed to bring in, uh, in I, I needed to bring in references from other places. So did, that includes uh, research on wood construction techniques, how they would build a certain area, for example, and also the to co collecting reference material. In my case, I looked at the wall and gate system from Biskupin in Poland. For the last point. Uh, Yes, the ultimate way of showing the data to deliver as much information as possible would be the interactive digital environment, so people can grab actually and turn a model by themselves um, and as a film, so show the 3D environment in motion and as still pictures. So now we are coming to the values of adding the third dimension in our work. The first value I want to mention or I want to speak about is the tool for simulation, as a, a tool uh, that works for simulation. I can use 3D to set up simulations, so like water effects on erosion, for example. Visibility analysis in ArcGIS or ArcMap take a long time and depends on certain parameters that you have to tell the program. I did visibility analysis in my... Um, in my um, master thesis, 
and I work with ArcMap a lot. So this program is not very flexible in order to work with the data. Um, this is why I basically create a 3D environment to simulate visibility analysis in Cinema 4D, where I have the opportunity to work much more faster and much more intuitive by moving the light, the light around. My setup, which you see here, is basically my 3D model with the light representing my viewer or my viewpoint or <laughs> observer point, uh, where the light hits the surface, that area is visible to the observer. The shadows are invisible to the observer, so it's logical. Well, these two pictures shows you my setup with a fourth wall switch on and off, which you see on the right picture, there is no fourth wall, uh, no, the, the fourth wall is switched off. Um, it was a very fast way for me to figure out uh, these different setups for later calculations in ArcMap. So the second value is the possibility to create an accurate, interactive, and visual representation, and not restricted to one viewpoint compared to drawings or photos. The third point is, of course, preservation. Um, These following images are part of a project which I'm currently working on uh, with a small team. So this is not uh, done yet but I'm just going to show you a couple of examples. And uh, the possibility to transfer findings worldwide on a virtual level. <coughs> <laughs> we can actually take this call and share it with a lot of scientists around the world and they all can examine it uh, at the same time. It's uh, also a flexible platform where data can be updated, rearranged with new discoveries and findings um, and so the model can be updated with every new um, excavation uh, concerning like Cornish as well. So um, the, sixth po the six, uh, sixth point is uh, the presentation of work, uh, for example, for founding and museums as well. And of course, the possibilities for the future, which are <coughs> virtual reality and 3D printing technology. Yes, um, I'm coming to my end. So the statement for the end is actually bring the 3D dimension in our documentation process. Thank you very much. Thank you.